All right. So I'm here to talk to you about the Tech Bar. Uh, Tech Bar is a group of students. I call them the best students on campus. Um, and that, that group of students helps other students and faculty and staff with domains or digital projects, really anything. We have, a, we have something called the Writing Center on campus, and probably a lot of you have writing centers on your campuses. We call, this is our digital writing center. So students come to us for consultations, faculty come to us for consultations, and then our wonderful students take those consultations. And I can't, I shouldn't say this, but this is me. I am. He's technically not supposed to say that. That's a secret. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So office communications, what's up? <laughs> so this all started back in 2017, before I was there, back when Taylor was there. You'll see somebody reoccurring in a lot of photos. Uh, Taylor will be, will be in many of these photos. Um, Taylor uh, used to work at St. Norbert, too. But we had the sandbox, and it was a makerspace plus a place that people came for consultations. Those consultations were we video work, really, and we didn't necessarily have a built-out staff of students to handle those interactions. Um, did some hardware checkouts for certain programs as well, and 3D printing, and we had a sewing machine. But that kind of uh, bore out the tech bar as we wanted it to be. So this is what we thought it was going to be like. Um, we wanted our students, our tech bar students, to gain competencies in certain things, uh, like the G Suite, uh, mapping, video creation, all those things. We wanted them to be able to sell themselves to future employers and um, then help other students as well with certain things. So. Um, we knew that we wanted students in that, in that role to help with walk-ins, some appointments, and we wanted those students and the tech bar in general to give uh, trainings to larger community groups, uh, groups of faculty, groups of students, things like that. Like I mentioned before, similar to a writing center, we wanted this to be a technical writing center where people came to us probably, hopefully, on a repeat basis uh, for consultation. We wanted there to be a tech show space, kind of like a, a, like a classroom of the future kind of a thing, potentially. And the student outreach, we want them to be able to explain, we wanted our students to be able to explain their competencies, their technical aptitude in a uh, community <coughs> setting as well, and then for a, a co-curricular, um, uh, from the co-curricular side, we wanted to do uh, badges so that we could sell that on resumes. So um, nuts and bolts of what we thought it was going to be. One staff supervisor, that was me for a little bit, uh, five to tech bar consultants, and then we wanted it to be located in a place where people could walk up and get help. Kind of like a, like a service desk or a help desk. Uh, centrally located at a hub of campus uh, where students already are, soft seating to facilitate those consultations. Uh, some tech dependencies that we saw at the time, domain of one's own, um, some other software licensing like WeVideo as well, and then collaborated uh, technology like a, a Google Jamboard. An example of a competency, this is a G Suite competency. Um, we wanted to have levels of our competencies, and I think these might be from, uh, I wasn't working there at the time, but I think these might have been from Google itself. But then it became something different, so um, we, our initial tagline was ser serving up digital skills and competencies, kind of like a bar serves up, you know, drinks for people. So. Um, we were located in, our, in a central hub of campus. Um, funny enough, not a whole lot of students go to that, that centrally located hub of campus, um, unless they need to. It's where the bursts are, the registrar, those, those, those offices are. Um, and it, again, was a service desk. So people came up in, with issues. Uh, a lot of the time, and even still today, a lot of the time that people come to us, it's for issues that are not consultations, it's more of a technical issue, like how do I install Word on my computer, things like that. 
Um, we were open mo Monday through Friday from 1 to 8 p.m. And um, students came for help with Google applications, we video help, and uh, helping our ed TTA students. So our first dabbling with domain of one's own was from our arts department. Um, this wasn't domain of one's own yet though. So we purchased individual domains from Reclaim, but they, again, it wasn't, our, 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 night, our, our domain of one's own instance is called night domains. These were not night domain sites yet. Um, our, the tech bar supervisor of the time worked with faculty members uh, to present services during class time. So, hey, we can help you with vVideo, we can help you with these other things. And those were all relationships built by grassroots, essentially. And then we took a, a, a tour back in 2017 of this place, uh, University of Mary Washington, Muhlenberg College in Bryn Mawr. And we learned a few things after we bounced ideas off of those institutions or people at those institutions. Um, we learned that the Tech Bar students need to be located near us. That's something that we learned from here. Um, the, the difficulty with where the Tech Bar was, we were in that student, that student information and services building, but that was across the courtyard from where ITS sat. Um, my, my team is in ITS, our information technology. Um, so that, there was a gap, a, kind of a, an issue with the, ge the, the geography there. Um, and we acknowledged that that was an issue. And then we wanted to, uh, from Muhlenberg College, we learned that students should be able to articulate their technical competencies. Um, and then they should be able to help other students articulate their technical competencies. And then we uh, based the, the whole tech bar at, after that point on the, the, the Bryn Mawr framework, which I uh, have an appendix of later. Um, all the art, by the way, was created by students. So whenever we, we change to a different era, we change to a different theme. Um, we started to, we'll call it Tech Bar 2.0. Um, we moved that in, uh, the Tech Bar into the office area where we sit. Um, super helpful for hearing, overhearing conversations, really anything. They, th there's really easy to access to ask people, uh, whoever they might be, questions. Um, we still took walk-in appointments, still do take walk-in appointments. And you know, we were still piloting at that time the domains um, with personal reclaim hosting accounts. Um, prep, uh, current logistics, we have one staff supervisor. We saw a need for a student lead. So um, that's generally a student, an upper class student, but it could be, it, it may not be. Um, that student probably has been working with us for a number of years. And they have to reapply for that job when they, when they get there. We still have five to six tech bar consultants. And um, we're, again, in that uh, staff supervisor's desk area, along with the rest of our team, our academic, academic technology team. And we're really oriented more for consultation than support, but we still do do some support. Uh, our tech dependencies are domain of one, one's own, other software. Um, we have collaborative technology again and appointment scheduling software. Um, expanded ask support. So we support mapping and uh, G Suite. Now it's changed to Google Workspace. Um, and the way that we drove, uh, drove people to us was by going out into class buildings and interacting with faculty members. It's really the best way that we found to get people to understand that we can help them out with things. Um, we started with uh, offering up digital, or the ability to do digital, um, I can't think of the word, but digital portfolios, there we go, uh, for our uh, English and communications uh, program and it kind of went into the computer science realm too. Um, and then we started to create tra uh, training for our tech bar consultants to hopefully get them to have some of those badges and uh, technical, competen technical competencies. And we hosted events. And we'll it's, it's Taylor's favorite. So. You've yeah. a lot of presentations, so I figured. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Taylor has a great presentation about called Y domains, and that's, I think, the second 
in it through that. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. About something you were talking about earlier about um, going out, so you have this physical space, the tech bar, yep. where people can come to you, yep. but then with you were going out to them yeah. to drive traffic to that place, or was that just another alternate space of support? Yeah, we, we, we go out to individual faculty members to drive them to think about uh, using our services uh, to as part of their curriculum. So, like, do you, maybe we saw um, an English uh, faculty who had a, a class, right? And at the end of his class, he had all of his students submit a physical portfolio of all the essays that the students wrote that semester. Mm -hmm. So we saw that, and then we we said, you might want to consider submitting these electronically. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of that takes uh, years. In, in class buildings to hear what's going on and uh, being out in the community as much as possible. So you, you have to know what's going on by, I guess, overhearing things, mm -hmm. being there a lot of the times. So. And so once they, he was doing that under Mays, I assume, then yep. would he, he would have his students go to the tech bar. Yep, yep. That, 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 so there's a circle of... Yeah, that, that, that be, it, it can either become a requirement of the, of the project to come to the tech bar some of our, our English faculty or other humanities faculty have student, uh, make it a requirement of a student to go to the writing center for a paper. Uh, that, that's a requirement of some professors to go to the, to the tech bar to make it a, an appointment for a consultation. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I'm sorry, oh, I didn't, I'll stop talking after the whole thing. <laughs> um, I just, the, the, I'm curious about the, the importance of the physical space. So yeah. we have a space right now that's slightly off of main campus, mm -hmm. but we have a satellite space that we're about to start brainstorming on better ways to use it, and this would be a great way of doing that. But I'm starting to wonder, mm -hmm. is it effective to have that physical space, or should we just disperse and go, you know, where there's trouble, we'll be there kind of thing? Yeah, I, the, the, the physical space is really, it's helpful for me um, because it allows, I, I'm not our domain's admin. And I, I, I honestly don't really have a whole lot to do with it anymore. But I am there if someone has a, a question about how does a certificate work? Mm -hmm. How does this part of this website function? It's, a, it's really, it, it's, it's nice to be able to rapidly ask questions uh, from, the, from the student handling the consul consultation to uh, Annika, who is the tech bar uh, supervisor right now. She can ask me questions, or the student can directly ask me questions. So, you know, um, I know that I wasn't around back when they had the, the tech bar in the different building to, to know how well or how not well that worked, but I know that they, they made a, the change to our current physical space for a reason, mm -hmm. to have it all co consolidated into one area that our entire team uh, resided at, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have kind of a similar program here at Cornell, um, um, has a sort of drop-in Mm -hmm. uh, kind of space as well. Um, do you have uh, situations where you're working with faculty where you can actually embed a student in a course, for the duration of the course? Um, kind of, you know, so the, mm -hmm. the way we're kind of doing these right now is to, to solicit faculty um, to connect a specific, um, we call them digital uh, fellows, connect a fellow with a course and uh, have mm -hmm. Sure, sure. We haven't, as far as I know, we haven't done anything formally like that. We've, um, our, I'm thankful that our, our tech bar students are more or less uh, great advocates for us out in the field. So um, I, I, we had a student who was in a, uh, a computer applications, business applications class, um, and they were leveraging some technology that we were kind of pushing. and. They were able to support some of the things that were happening in the class, in, during class periods that I didn't have to go up to the classroom to, to, to help support, um, but nothing formalized like that. And one, one follow-up too, do you, do you ever run into any um, potential conflict in terms of um, almost a kind of sense of competition between student support of digital projects um, and professional staff support? Occasional issues where we've got one staff member who, like, you know, I have a master's degree in this, but you know, I just work according to uh, the 18 formulas. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing where it's, 
the, the scope of support is pretty limited um, for our, our students. It's expanding every single year, but, it's, but, but, but it is fairly limited currently. So if a, if a person had a question or uh, like an instructor had a question about like spinning up a shiny app server for R, let's say, that wouldn't be handled by one of our, uh, by, by one of our students. That would be handled by, by me or Annika or somebody else on my team. There's a, but if you wouldn't want me to give you a consultation about how to build a WordPress site, I would not lead you to the right place. I wouldn't do a good job with that. But our students do an incredible job with that. You wouldn't want me to tell you how to use Illustrator, for instance, but we have a few students who would be incredible resources for that. Um, so it, it, there's, a, there's pretty clear lines of, of support there, which are nice. So part of our goal was to be out in the community selling ourselves and promoting our services and training people uh, how to use technology and showing people cool technology. You know, we have a VR headset there. We have um, uh, a session about open domains where people came and built websites in a more of a workshop setting. And each year we have uh, an involvement fair and SNC day where we're out in the field showing people and parents mostly uh, what we do. So it kind of drives people to us too. So we support uh, many things and we offer training in many things right now. These are more, more or less, most of them are built internally, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we've stolen some from other places too. There's a great Python training called Python for Everyone that you should all do if you haven't, um, if, if you're interested at all in Python. But um, we, again, created all these internally. They're housed in Google Docs with Loom videos and um, documenter for some of them as well. And then presently we track them in a spreadsheet. We have, uh, we, we have goals to, to track them elsewhere. Kind of get back to that Muhlenberg uh, thing where we talk about how we, how students can express how they actually uh, know things. Um, so right now we take, uh, we have students create appointments on via Bookly. Uh, if you go to techbar.night.domains right now, you can actually make an appointment with me. Um, we, we still take walk-in appointments and virtual appointments. Those are, the virtual appointments are, ha have to be done via the scheduling software. And um, we support, of course, domain of one's own and other software. And uh, we, before Taylor left, he and I put together a studio space, um, not physically located in the same area as, as we are right now, but we found a path of least resistance in a different building that is actually being leveled this summer. Um, <laughs> so we have to move it again, but that's fine. Um, but that space, and I'll, I'll show you more of that in a, in a little bit, but that space is a place for a lot of cool digital projects. So. Tech Bar Studio, probably the newest thing that we've done, like I said before. Um, our primary objectives of the studio were, to, of course, free of space in our tech bar. So we had all this equipment in our physical office, and that wasn't really good. So um, we knew that we wanted it to facilitate podcasting and video production work. This isn't professional quality but video production. Almost all of our equipment is prosumer, probably level equipment. But it's, you know, it does a really nice job, I think. And it had to be modular. So we had to be able to tear it down, put it back together without any issues. And if somebody, like, unplugged something, pretty easy to know what was unplugged, so you can just plug it back in. But really nothing that you can mess up in that, in, in that space, which is great. Uh, to use this space, you just have to make an appointment with one of our Tech Bar consultants. And we train our consultants how to use the technology that the person wants to use. Um, and one of our secondary objectives was to build it out as, as people requested software. So we, we knew that we wanted to do uh, podcasting, screencasting, video production, all that stuff. But if somebody had a compelling reason that they wanted to do a full wall green screen or something like that, then we could facilitate that potentially <coughs> if we could afford it at the time. And um, so, and because of the, where, where the space is, it's just meant to, uh, and the space that it is right now, it's meant to be that modular and be that flexible. 
and that you know we wanted to make sure that we could uh, efficiently move between uh, the different functionality of the room. So these are some pictures of, of the space as it kind of was after Taylor and I initially built it out. We've improved the mic stands and the mics that are on those stands. You made those whiteboard tables for part of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we found some tables in the classroom. <laughs> this is an old high school, by the way, that this. Nailed whiteboards to them, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we built the little mount for the, the, the backdrop there, too. These are some pictures of it in action. Pretty interesting and cool. Uh, we have an awesome top-down camera rig for our whiteboard tables uh, that you could use, and then some C stands that you could put your your lights on and your camera on if you wanted to. Really interesting. Uh, we have a screens casting station. Really nice photography taken on that black bat trap over there. Um, I think. Oh, Monica's not in there, but. Um, some roll-up green screens from Elgato that are pretty nice and cool. We have a VR computer as well in that space. All right, so getting away from, from the studio real quick. Um, we put on this last academic year, I guess in over our January uh, semester, a something called Domains Camp. And I want to just promote this real quick. If you all wanted to, to participate in a Domains Camp, we are having a camp counselor session in August. So our, the, the, the actual event took place in, on January 10th. Just a, an event that we showed people, like visitor resident, visitor resident maps, things like that, how to build out your domains. And, um, but we want to participate with other institutions. And so if you want to stop by the art exhibits tomorrow, I'll be out there with uh, some more information about Domains Camp. So. So where are we going in the future? Um, we're physically moving, as I told, as I mentioned earlier. So we need to make sure that we do that right. And I'm a, a little concerned. We have some other big initiatives, big physical building initiatives happening on campus right now. So we're not sure when that physical uh, move will happen. But I think it, it'll happen in the next two years. Um, it'll be located in the library. Is where they're going to put us in the basement of the library, and they want to make that into the student hub of campus, essentially. Um, we want to refocus on our trip out east in 2017, so we kind of lost our, our way on the Muhlenberg concept of helping students tell you a story about their digital competencies. So how do we do that, uh, extracurricular uh, transcripts, things like that, how do, we, how, do, how do we facilitate that, what kind of application do we want to use to facilitate that? And we're getting started again with campus outreach. Well, we've, We've continued to do campus outreach, but it's kind of dwindled and fallen off since the, or because of the pandemic. So we have some tech bar training sessions coming up uh, in about a few, in just a month, and um, we want to keep on fostering those department interdepartment relationships. Uh, we want to enhance some of our offerings, so offering more advanced uh, consultations for Adobe data analytics, so R, Python, things like that. Um, focusing more on the advanced things you can do in HTML and CSS as well would be really cool. And we want to pilot new technologies in our studio. So um, I mentioned before that we build it as it's needed. So we want to make sure that people can, are aware that it's, there's a lot of fe flexibility for them if they come to the studio. So, and they could change it if they wanted to. And um, we want to offer some class-specific workshops. So right now, Annika and our instructional designer go out into the classes and give uh, uh, help students onboard into Night Domains. But we want to do something more specific for uh, dis disciplines who are doing portfolio work, maybe kind of killing multiple birds with one stone instead of having everyone come in for a tech bar consult consultation. Right. So if you if anyone has any questions, I'll be I can take them right now, or we can always talk later. It does, doesn't really matter to me. You get about six more minutes or so. Oh, cool, awesome. Not really a question, but we asked the way you talk. Is I'm sitting here watching, so I run the, the digital health center, which is basically our version of this, and yep. we've gone through the same exact like evolution, mm -hmm. like convert, watching convergent evolution, like that's. 
did that. We did that. Mm -hmm. We're here. So we need to talk because I think it'd be useful to kind of yeah. work on that. So that's not really a question, but it, it's, it's kind of actually neat that to see that things that we struggle with are similar to same things that the thoughts. I think because we're kind of a, maybe a similarly yeah. sized college, maybe St. Norbert's a little smaller, but like those yep. kinds of things. So um, I don't know. That's, that's really it's yeah. good. Um, yeah. So come to the session that Carl and I are doing tomorrow, too, so you can kind of <laughs> see some of the stuff that we're doing. Um, but, awesome. Uh, I mean, maybe I'm curious, but what kind of, um, how would you describe the, the, uh, the training that the, uh, the students get through your service so far? I mean, it's on kind of ongoing professional development that they have. Yeah, we, we try to make it better each year, um, but, or, and try to make it more formalized each year. So right now it's an opt-in kind of a thing. So we, we have a list of training, most, and they're all in Google Docs, and then they reference other material, and then, uh, we say, okay, when you're not taking a consultation, uh, train, basically. We say, this is your time to, to, to train. And, and, and students get paid during that time, of course. Um, and then they, during their, one, their one-on-ones with their supervisor, they talk about the training that they're, that they're going through. Um, we need to do that better. We need to do that, that in a more formalized way. And we know that. And we need to be able to have that co-curricular transcript that at least this would play into. If you were HTML sufficient or whatever like that, whatever it might be, that needs to be a badge or some, some way of showing that you have that, that competency. We don't currently do that, but that's something that we want to be able to do, give our students. And I, I don't know if you guys still do this, but when folks are new, they get paired up a lot with the- Yes, the yes. Students. Yeah, there's a lot of pass down knowledge from, from upperclassmen to lowerclassmen. I, is it institutional funds? Is it federal work study students? It, it, it has to be institutional. It's institutional yeah. Funds. yeah. Okay. So it started as a, uh, it grew out of part of it, like an actual college initiative, and then it isn't technically that anymore, but it grew, proved its worth kind of thing. So. Right. So now it's in a marketing budget. Mm -hmm. okay. And do you roll up under like the CPL or? Uh, we're, we're all in, I, in IT. So this is an ITS student <coughs> student organization. Um, it's nice that they're going to pick in the library rather than the central. Yeah, library, you know? there's differing opinions about should our teams move to the library or not. Um, half of us will 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 be in our we're, we're in the business building in the first floor of our business building right now. So half of our team will be in that space still even after this move, and then the, the service desk and our team will be off in the library. So there's a lot of differing opinions about whether or not we should do that or not. Are there other academic support services? They, so. Or peer kind of burdens too? Yeah, we're, we're in the process of building out a Center for Teaching and Learning. So, um, well, I don't, I, <laughs> we, we, we have aspirations to build out a Center for Teaching and Learning um, as an institution. And we want, we want that to be adjacent. We want that to be in, this, in a similar location as us. Um, or if the institution, institution does. So that will be over in the library too, different floor, but same building. Um, <coughs> so we're hoping to, to be able to help onboard instructors or help instructors uh, rapidly. And so all the services that an instructor might need should be in the same location. And then because most of those, a lot of those resources are similar to what a student might need, then those student services will be there too. But our registrar, bursar, things like that, will be, will be in a different building. Yeah. yeah. That's probably about all the time we have. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah.